my grandkids and anybody else that need it. You're a liar. You you're are a liar. A liar. You are a liar. You're a liar. That you're you're a liar. She was on the phone with me five, six times you're a, a day. Liar. Why, I, why was Mr. Webb living with you? He's a punk bomb. We, Your Honor, we supplied I would... everything for them. Their food, everything. This episode has got accusations in the air and lots of drama. But here is the gist. Brittany Brewington claims that Lee, the father of her son, Giovanni, is denying paternity because he does not want to pay child support. However, Lee denies being Giovanni's daddy, claiming that Brittany is only using him for money. How exactly does Brittany prove her assertion? So, Ms. Brewington, you claim you are 100% certain that Mr. Lee is the father, and can you tell me how you know? Yes, Your Honor, I am without a doubt 100% certain that he is my son's father. Not only was I only sleeping with him, we were actually working on our relationship. We already have a child from a previous situation. We got back together. We're working on us. Well, that's wild. So one party fully believed that they were working on getting back together, and the other party had no idea what was even going on. Talk about reading the energy wrong. However, whether or not Lee knew that the couple were trying to get back together was not Brittany's business. Hence, she further proved how she came about the paternity to the court. Your Honor, I was living with him. We were living in the same household, in the same bed. Were you living in the same house? Around the time, yes. But you weren't together. Exactly. So were you sharing a bed? Yes, ma'am. And fluid. No. Clearly, yes, yes, clearly. I'm, I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. No, ma'am. I will say, I'm... although she did not say it as eloquently as I would have liked. This woman is not backing down, and neither is Lee because he is debunking every statement she makes about them being sexually intimate while they were, according to him, plain housemates. Be that as it may, Brittany is not done yet. The judge requested that she explain the whole pregnancy window more succinctly. Let's see what she has to say. Um, they said, oh, you actually missed your last shot. I didn't even realize that they said that they had to do a pregnancy test before they could go ahead with the birth control. So I went ahead, they did a pregnancy test. It came up positive. Um, I told him, he completely, he did not believe me at all. He went out and got three pregnancy tests, made me take all that's of the them. They were all positive. And he was like, well, that's not my baby because we didn't have sex. And I'm like, what are you talking about? We've been having sex. And then the last time we probably had sex was um, Valentine's Day. Well, that was one slip up. Lee cannot even get the dates correctly, which begs the question, is he indeed not the father? Or is he just trying to avoid paying child support like Brittany said? But that's not even the worst part yet. Take a look at this. Throughout this pregnancy, as you prepare for the birth of Giovanni, was Mr. Lee present? No, he was telling people I was just getting fat. He was like, she just eats a lot of fast food. Everybody was rubbing, my friends were rubbing my stomach. I'm showing ultrasounds to people. He's like, don't believe her, she's just fat. The entire time, I'm talking about, I'm going into labor, he's like, no, you're not. What kind of denial is this? I am as shocked as the judge right now. If I had ever believed Lee's story, I sure as hell wouldn't have taken his words seriously anymore at this point. It keeps getting worse to the point that despite saying that Britney was just fat, Lee still went ahead to sign Giovanni's birth certificate and even gave him his full government name. Why did he feel the need to do that? You're making a, a you're making an execution of a birth certificate sound like a consolation prize or a consolation move. I, well, since I'm going to do this, I might as well. That's not why you sign a birth certificate. I didn't, I didn't know I couldn't take my name back off of it. I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> or else I would have I wouldn't have signed it. If I I wasn't So you weren't aware of the law. Legal document. Well, 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 well what, what I'm saying is it just doesn't make any sense that you had absolutely no thought that this child could be yours. At this point, Brittany seemed to be scoring all the points, but Lee kept messing up. If there is any lesson to be learned here, it is to know the basics of the law before doing anything that could backfire legally. Anyway, Lee also explained that the reason he felt Giovanni was not his was because of something Brittany's friend had told him. Now, what that thing was, we're going to find out. What did the friend tell you, Mr. Lee? She told me that she actually is friends with the dude who is the father and that he's trying to get in contact with Brittany, but she keeps ignoring him and wants me to be the dad since I'm there already. But for me, it didn't make a change. It was just more verification for me because it didn't change nothing. It wouldn't take me off child support. It wouldn't change the situation with the child. Your it's Honor, only more information I could use. has been about getting off of child support, honestly. It, that's, that's what yes. he talks about Definitely, all day yes. long. Right. Brittany is starting to act suspicious because why would she even say that in the first place? Something isn't adding up. These two keep up with the name calling and attitude toward each other. Even the judge is tired of their drama. Anyway, the DNA results are out and it is time for us to find out who has been lying this whole time and who is telling the truth. Let's see how it goes. Mr. Lee, 
you are not the father. I told you. Hold up. I already knew. <laughs> I told you. Don't look at me like that. I don't know God's plan. Who else? It was you did that was. Did you just that. Do that. inject I, God in this? I, I, I'm, I did not put him in this. I, I'm just saying. No, I'm just, look, hold on, hold on. Wow. Who would have thought that after all of that attitude and story, Lee is not Giovanni's biological father? However, it seems like Brittany also didn't ever think that another person could be her son's father. And to this point, she is shocked by the revelation. Man, this is one crazy reveal. I won't lie. It got me just as it did Brittany in the entire courtroom. Damn, I put you through a lot. It's all good. This is three years. <laughs> I am years. so sorry. Mm -hmm. I have to ask you, do you know who his biological father is? I have an idea. You just have an idea? I have an idea. I want you to bring him to this courtroom, and I want you to submit to this DNA testing again. In this episode of Paternity Court, Laconda Casey has always thought that her father was dead, all thanks to her mother, who claims that Casey's father, Otis Hawkins, had passed away a long time ago. Now, here's the twist. Another man, Richard Edwards, claims that he is 100% sure that Casey is his daughter. How is that even possible? I don't know, but this is precisely what's going on here. Miss Casey, you say that for more than 25 years, your mother has told you that a deceased man who is listed on your birth certificate is your biological father. Yes, Your Honor. Now another man, Mr. Edwards, is claiming he is your biological father. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Ewing, you say you are sure Mr. Edwards is not your daughter's father in- This man seems so confident in what he is saying. It is pretty difficult to believe him because after all, a woman would know whose pregnancy she was carrying. Other than that, is it possible that she knowingly deprived her daughter of experiencing fatherly love despite knowing how much Casey had always longed for a father in her life? Hear the sadness in her voice. Not knowing where I came from, uh, I built a bond with Otis Hawkins, who's on my birth certificate, even though he's not a, ever been in my life. I do not know what the man looks like. I don't have a picture of him. I don't have anything about him, but he is on my birth certificate. <laughs> my oldest daughter I gave, I passed Hawkins on to her. So I pretty much raise my kids the way that I have never been raised. I make sure that the mother and the father is in the home. Did you guys see that eye roll from Casey? Mama may claim that she would have tried, but the fact is that she never did. So she could spare Casey all of that sob story. Let's circle back to the one who claims that Casey is his long lost daughter. What makes him so confident in his claim? Well, let's hear from the horse's mouth. Why are you so convinced that you're her father? I don't even understand how I can tell. It's like the hair stands up on my back she looks so much like my family. She's got everything that my mom had, you know, what my mom looked like. I got six other daughters, and, and my youngest daughter, I mean, if you look at her and look at her, you would do. They look very similar, you Yes, say. yes ma'am, they look. Hmm, that's another angle. Because of that, Casey is not exactly certain that Edwards is telling the truth, even after seeing the resemblance between her and his daughter. The craziest part of this whole situation is that Otis Hawkins was never even dead, and the court was able to locate him, much to everyone's surprise. <laughs> and we found him for you. Jerome, please escort oh my Mr. Hawkins God. into the courtroom. <laughs> You need to sit down? You okay? You go up to a witness stand. Oh my God, Laconda, there's your dad! There's your dad! What you Oh, what a beautiful reunion. All this while, the man who Casey thought was dead was alive after all. And just as Casey hoped and thought that she would one day find him, Hawkins claims that he also tried to find her but wasn't successful. However, Casey continues to bawl her eyes out on the lost years while Hawkins reminisces on the times he shared with her before they lost contact. Let you go. I see you <laughs> with all your family. Mm -hmm. So you've been keeping Laconda's picture. All these years I look You at remember the relationship with her mother. Yes. Tell me about that relationship. It was pretty good at first, and it just, after some years, it just went bad. When I was overseas when Laconda was born, and there was 
When I got back, she was like about. They had all this love, and they still got separated. The sad reality of life. As the conversations flow, one big question is on everybody's mind. How did the false story of him being dead get out? Didn't Hawkins ever hear that Casey's mom or even Casey was looking for him? Here is what Hawkins has to say about that. Incorrect I I information get out. I don't know, but I know one thing for certain. Didn't nobody in my family put that out. Did you make up the story about hearing that he had been shot and killed? No, no, I did not oh. make up that story. That's oh. what I was told before I left San Diego to move back to Long Beach. That's what I was told. Okay, so I think it's time to get the results. And you have another man. Right. Edwards has been sitting there all this time, watching the moments between Casey and Hawkins. Despite all that has been revealed right in the court, Edwards still believes that Casey is his. Thankfully, stories may be cooked up, but a DNA test can never be false. The moment has come for this grand reveal. Who exactly is Casey's father? Mr. Edwards, you are not her father. <sighs> Mr. Hawkins, you are not her father. This just has to be the most shocking thing to hear so far. So, none of these men is Casey's father. This woman has gone through so much in life, only to be told that someone she had yearned for and thought was her father truly is it. That's some heartbreaking stuff right there. While we don't know for sure who the father is, Mama dropped a name at the end of this episode. Do you know who her father is? Yeah, I do. And it's? His brother. <laughs> Mr. Hawkins' brother? Whoa. Yes. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. <laughs> so you were sleeping with him and his brother he at was the gone. same time? No, not at the same time. He was gone. He was out, out to sea, and I had slept with his brother twice, and I told his brother I couldn't do this no more. Nathaniel Webb and his girlfriend, Aubriana Reams, stand before the court to debunk Tasha Cole and her mother's claim that Webb is the father of her six-month-old daughter, Majestic. Tasha says that the only reason Webb is denying paternity is because he does not want to jeopardize his current relationship with Aubriana. Hmm, what exactly is the story here? All right, so Mr. Webb, how can you be so certain you are not this child's biological father? I never had sex with her, Your Honor. <laughs> Well, that would rule you out. You never had sex with her? No. Yeah, he does. She's a liar. <laughs> She's crazy. Miss Cole, we've heard a lot of defenses in this courtroom. Rarely have we ever heard that you've never had sex with her. She's absolutely crazy. This is one very tricky situation we have here. I mean, can there be a child without sexual penetration? Or are we about to witness some Virgin Mary kind of thing happen here? Well, I highly doubt that is the case, especially after Mama Cole added that she was aware that Webb was staying at her daughter's house because she and her husband practically took care of Webb's needs. Come on, you know dang good and well that me and my husband took care of you the whole time you, you were there. I didn't see you Don't for one you... time the whole no. time I was yeah, there. All right, let's get some help. order. You're a right, so you need help just sorry, much. Let's Honor, get some I'm order. Like getting... So, Miss Cole, you said you and your husband were taking care of Mr. Webb? Yes, and my grandkids and anybody else that needed. You're a liar. You are a liar. The answer to that question just has to be that either Webb and his girlfriend were in an open relationship or that his girlfriend did not consider him as her boyfriend at the time for such to happen. Which girlfriend would allow her boyfriend to stay over at another woman's house, even if it's just for a few days? At this point, Webb's girlfriend decided to butt in. And you yeah, called me, course. and you it's called it. me with his friend telling me that he was there for three weeks and you guys were having sex and blah, blah, blah. At first, I did believe that. But then I heard you his story and none of it. Shut up, I am talking. Talking. Hold on, let's be respectful. So anyway, she was telling me that they were sleeping together and stuff. He wasn't even there for three weeks. He was there for a week, maybe a week and a half. Just over there? Yes, he was hanging, I knew they were hanging out. I don't understand this, do you, Jerome? Girl, neither do I. Anyway, Webb goes on to explain how he found out Tazia was pregnant. He claimed that she sent him text messages talking about how she got an ultrasound, and he told her off, saying that he wasn't responsible for her pregnancy and didn't want to be involved in any of it. Now, there's a twist. Tasha claims that Webb had at one point admitted to being the father. Did he ever acknowledge that he was the father? He admitted to oh, my dad. You are not. a liar. He admitted to my cousin that he was the dad. What do you think Mr. Webb is Miss Cole's 
confused motive if you say you've never slept with her. Wh why manufacture all of this? I think she's obsessed with me. She, there, she's obsessed with me or something. No. I don't know what it is. I've been trying to figure There's out the last There's one reason year. why I'm here. Her to know is. for sure he's the dad because I did have another partner. It was a month. Wait a minute. Is it possible that Webb is not the father and the other possibility is not even present? Well, to be fair, Tasha claimed that she told Webb about the other possibility. However, Tasha started to feel like Webb just might be the daddy because of her stipulated due date for the delivery. Hearing her explanation, things started to get clearer. See for yourself. Texted him and called the other guy and I told both That's of them. That's a lie. I was for certain that the other guy was the dad uh. until <laughs> my, ba my due date got changed a month ahead, which would make him the dad. It went from February 22nd to January 28th. You submitted a calendar to the court, am I correct? Oh, you have another copy, Jerome? Let me see that, please. So this calendar outlines what exactly? As you have seen, despite Tasha's explanation, Webb still maintains that Tasha does not know what she is saying. Things get even messier in the courtroom when Tasha describes Webb's private part, which causes another set of squabbles between her and Aubriana. However, everyone is present in court to find out one thing, if Webb is truly Majestic's baby daddy. So let's find out. Mr. Webb, you are not her father. <laughs> oh! oh. Yeah, uh, you're crazy. Ms. You need Webb. to go to a mental hospital. Ms. Webb. There, get her there. Get her there. Mr. Suicide Webb, Ms. Get Reams, out. stop. But I want a lie detector. Listen, don't we don't stop. clown in this courtroom. I know you probably feel relieved, vindicated, but at the same time, there's a beautiful young baby. Wow. While it must have felt like an in-your-face moment for Webb, Baby Majestic's biological father is unknown, which is sad. Banter aside, the main goal of this show is to ascertain the father of the baby in question. Even the judge agrees with this. Listen, we don't Stop. clown in this courtroom. I know you probably feel relieved, vindicated, but at the same time, there's a beautiful young baby whose life and paternity is still at issue. Miss Cole, you stood firm in your testimony that you were intimate with Mr. Webb. Yes. And this other guy? Yes, Your Honor. Have you mentioned this pregnancy to the other guys? I told both of them after the same day I took the pregnancy test.